Example 64. How much money on average will an insurance company make off a one-year life insurance policy worth $10,000 if they charge $290 for the policy and you have a 99.9 .9 probability of surviving the year? Okay, so when you read this problem, the first thing you want to do is try to figure out what technique is involved, what we should do to solve the problem. And I think it's pretty clear that this is an expected value problem because it says how much money on average will a company make? So the word expected means basically what you expect to happen and that's what, hap that's what happens on average or what typically happens. So when they ask us to calculate an average there, it makes us think of the expected value. And then many times expected value problems involve money situations. So the fact that they're asking is how much money on average will the company make? It seems a very clear cut case that this is an expected value problem. And once you know it's an expected value problem, you're going to want to set up a probability distribution typically. There are faster ways sometimes to do the problem, but in the beginning when you're first learning, it's a good idea to do the problem this way. So we're going to create a table that has x times p of x. Now this table, remember the x represents essentially the possible outcomes. I want you to think of it in this case as a dollar amount because our outcomes here are related to money. And then of course the probabilities will be the probability that you make or lose that money, right? That's the idea of the problem. Now what you want to next do is try to think of something that's not necessarily numerical but just the idea of what determines um, how the money will be paid out in life insurance. In other words, what's the whole point of life insurance? You know, the basic idea is whether you live or die, right? That's the key idea. So essentially what I want to do here is I want to say, okay, there's going to be a scenario if I live and then there'll be a scenario if I die, right? So the question then becomes, you know, what's the uh, payout amounts based on these two events, right? So these two events are going to control how much money is paid out. So they don't go directly in the table, right? Because they're not dollar amounts, they're not numbers, but and we need to put only numbers in these positions. But I do want to have them here because I want to know, well, gee, why is this dollar amount in this location? Well, it's linked to the scenario where the person lives all the way through the year. Okay, so let's think about that now. We're doing this from the perspective of the company. That's important too. It has a point of view. The problem should be done with the perspective of the company. The problem asks us to do it that way. So what I want to think about is if my customer lives the entire year, what does that mean for me as the insurance company? Well, let's see. I charge $290 for the policy, right? So the person paid me $290 for the protection of the life insurance policy. But at the end of the year, the person is still alive, so I don't need to pay him anything. So ultimately, I get to keep his 290. So to me, that's a gain of $290, right? So that's a plus 290. Now, if I think about the other scenario, the scenario where um, the person dies, who I sold the policy to, now, unfortunately, I've got to write out a check to his family or her family and pay them a $10,000 check, right? But we want to keep in mind something important that isn't a $10,000 loss to the company because the company still has that original $290 that the person paid, right? They deposited that check, it's been cashed, it's in the bank account. When the family um, you know, asks for money because their loved one died, you're going to write a check to them of $10,000. But you still have that $290 sitting in the bank. So the net loss is actually $10,000 minus the $290. So the total loss is 9,710. So sometimes you have to be very careful and think these things through. You don't just jump to putting numbers in. Now notice also I put a plus sign here. I didn't need to put a plus sign for a positive number, but I'm doing that because I want to emphasize that you need to put the signs that belong with these numbers because a common mistake is to forget to put the negative here when it's a loss. So in this case, the person or the company loses $9,710. You want to make sure you write it as a negative because if you don't, when you do your calculation at the end, your number will be too high. This number is ultimately going to subtract from the number you end up with here so that you get the right answer at the end. All right, now the next phase of the problem, once you have the dollar amounts that are appropriate for the problem, you have to come up with the probabilities, right? The corresponding probabilities. So what we're asking is what's the probability that the person lives the whole year? Well, that was given to us, right? It says we have a 99.9% .9 probability of surviving the year. As a decimal, that's 0.999, right? By the way, these numbers can be found by looking up actuarial tables on the internet, or you could actually hire an actuary if you were running a company and that person or the group of people would be in charge of coming up with these probabilities for us. Now, as far as the uh, death amount, then the probability that you would die by the end of the year, 
course, that has to be the complement of this. What I mean by that is these two numbers should add to 100, right? Because there are only two cases, right? Either the person lives by the end of the year or the person has died over the course of the year. You can't have anything in between because anything in between is still being alive. And if you're still alive, the company doesn't pay. So you just have to do 1 minus this number to get the probability here. And if you do that, of course, you will get 0 0.001. If you add these two together, you will get a sum of 1, which makes this a true probability distribution. Okay, so the hard part's done. We filled out the table. The rest is very easy. We just go straight across and we multiply x times p of x. And remember then that, that means that the sum here, the mean, will be the sum, which is just the sum of the x times p of x column. So once we add up this column, we will have our average. So we're looking for the answer down here, and that's our solution. So all we have to do is multiply straight across and we'll be done. Now this one's very easy because this is like dividing by a thousand so we'll move the decimal point over three places. So I know this one will be minus nine dollars and seventy one cents. That's what that one works out to be. Let's see what the other one works out to be. So what is 99.9% .9 of 290? So 290 times 0.999 and when I'm done I get 289.71. Okay, so now that I have those two numbers listed, right, remember I just multiplied straight across in both cases, then because this one is negative, this will actually subtract and 971 will be removed from that total. We'll end up with an even number of $280. So the answer to the question is $280. On average, the company will make $280 per policy sold. Now, of course, on an individual policy, they can't make 280, right? They either make 290 or they lose 9,710. But what this is saying is that over the course of a lot of sales, so it might maybe at the end of the year when they look at their books, they'll see lots of plus 290s, right? And then we'll have some places where they have minus 9,710, where unfortunately some of their customers passed away. And when that happens, right, they'll have a total amount of money brought in and a total number of policies sold. And what we're saying is if they divide the total amount of revenue they got from selling the policies by the total number of policies sold, it'll work out to be, if they have a large number of sales, about $280 because that would be the average amount they made. So it's actually quite a good business if you think about it. If you sold a thousand policies, you'd make approximately $280,000 on average in a typical year. So it's quite a nice profit margin.